So now let's look at, part of our informed discussion is if somebody says, well, you know, I was all geeked up about having bypass surgery because frankly, laying on a hospital table, having my chest ripped open and all that, it sounded like so much fun. But now you've talked me out of it. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna be open-minded and look at what else you might recommend. So, so let's look at an option. And I'll introduce an informed doctor, Caldwell Esselstyn, if you saw Forks Over Knives, he was one of the featured doctors. Um, I think it's interesting that so many people who are involved in doing the kind of work that I do and Dr. Esselstyn does, we all started our lives as pretty traditional healthcare practitioners. And Dr. Esselstyn did. He was head of the breast cancer surgery unit at Cleveland Clinic for a very long time. And he got interested, like a lot of us, in uh, looking at health outcomes in other places, discovered that in many places in the world, people don't have so much cardiovascular disease and not so many people die of it. So anyway, when he decided to go a different direction, he did a study, he enrolled uh, 24 patients who had had 49 events. These were some pretty sick people. Uh, five of these people were told back in 1985 when this started that he uh, that they would not finish out the year. They'd been sent home to die by their expert cardiologists. And so he put them on a diet, much like the one we'll talk about shortly here. And after dietary intervention, using a plant-based diet, their cholesterol dropped by about 100 points. Uh, for many of them, disease progression stopped. For some, it re reversed. And I don't know how many of you have seen his book, but he has angiograms before and after showing that these diseased arteries repaired themselves. Now, we don't have any surgeries or drugs in medicine that create that same result. Um, chest pain was reduced or disappeared, exercise capacity restored, sexual function restored. The most important thing, perhaps, is none of these people ever had any more procedures, events, drugs. They remained stable. And the five who were supposed to be dead in 1985 are still alive today. Two of them were in the movie Forks Over Knives with me. Now think about, do you think that this type of discussion is going on at any pharmaceutical convention in, in Florida right now? Talking about this new drug that we have that creates these miraculous results where people outlive their diagnosis by 30 years routinely? Not so much. Um, there six patients left the study. They thought it was too hard. That's usually what people say, this is so hard. And I always wonder, well, I guess what, what is your definition of hard? It's pretty subjective actually. Uh, but six patients left the study. They had four cases of chest pain, two cases of um, ventric ventricular tachycardia, four bypass surgeries, angioplasty, congestive heart failure, and death. When we get to this issue of so hard, how many people think that angioplasty or bypass surgery or death are hard? Okay. I really think eating some black bean chili and going out to run is much easier than bypass surgery. I'm just saying. Everybody makes up their own mind on this, but... But, but look at the difference here, 13 events in six people who decided not to stick with it, none in the ones who did. Dr. Esselstyn has continued doing this type of work. This is a, a study that he published a couple years ago on the 198 patients who followed the original 24. Notice the 90% compliance rate, so much for how hard it is. 0.6% uh, incidence rate in the compliant group, 62% and the non-compliant group. I mean, it really speaks volumes. So you know, think about this from the perspective of somebody looking at this for the first time, if the informed discussion was actually going on. We go through cholesterol-lowering drugs, aspirin, hypertension drugs, angioplasty, bypass, and all we're doing, this isn't my opinion, this is what the medical literature says. And that's another thing too, if we get this out of everybody's opinion and we just stick with the science, the story unfolds and tells itself just beautifully. We don't have to, anything to argue about anymore. We're just looking at science. And then this is the option. How many people think that some folks might be motivated to do the diet change if they saw this? That's the whole point. And since this discussion is not going on in doctor's offices, we just have to take it out to venues like this. Now let's look at a, a couple of different outcomes for people. Let's start with an uninformed consumer. And, and the interesting thing about this particular individual is he was informed about just about everything else. Tim Russert was a well-known and much beloved newsman who I missed during this election cycle like you can't believe. I would have loved to have heard what he had to say about these things, right? Well, anyway, with, with, he was a wealthy man. He had excellent insurance coverage and he went to the best doctors in New York and I would put air quotes around that and he took all the right drugs for his conditions. He was taking a statin drug, a hypertension drug, a prediabetes drug, and a daily aspirin. 
His biomarkers were excellent. In fact, he saw a physician in New York City who signed off, sent him home with a clean bill of health just a few weeks before the heart attack that killed him at the age of 58. And here's the problem with this approach to medicine that we're taking right now. The tests that he had and the drugs that he took could not and did not address what killed him, which was miles of rotting arteries lined with unstable plaques, one of them ruptured, and caused the heart attack that killed him. Now, some people have said to me, well, you know, Dr. Pam, you're a naturopath, and that certainly would have caused you to recommend something different to him. Yeah, I would have recommended that he change his diet, but, but what they're getting at is, draw, is supplements and alternative treatments. And um, I, I call myself a recovering naturopath. Right? I, every day I pull into the parking lot of my office, try to forget what I learned so I can be helpful to people. Because had I given somebody like Tim Russert high-dose cinnamon for his pre-diabetic condition, high-dose niacin for his cholesterol, and Hawthorne Berry for his blood pressure, he'd still be a dead guy with better blood work. Okay? And that's not the end point, you guys. That's not the end point we're looking for here. Um, here's an informed consumer. Better outcome an informed, happy ending. Not because of medical intervention, however. Take a look at Bill Clinton. This is what amazes me about the Bill Clinton story. The best, air quotes around that, physicians in the United States of America take care of the president. And the best physicians in the country watched him eat cheeseburgers and french fries. He was known for it. While his health, descended, he descended into worsening heart disease, finally had a bypass surgery, it didn't work. He ended up in the hospital and had angioplasty. And then he later explained on the Wolf Blitzer show, and I think this was back in 2009, that he was scared half to death after these, those arteries closed up again. So he read the China study, he read pervert, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, and he fixed himself. He took matters into his own hands. And that's perhaps the most important message of all here is stop outsourcing your health to people who don't have a horse in the race. You are the one who benefits or suffers based on the decisions that get made. So wealth doesn't protect you. I said earlier my mother wouldn't listen to me. She was a wealthy, educated woman. She just didn't want to hear about this. Wealth doesn't educate you. Insurance doesn't educate, uh, doesn't, I'm sorry, wealth doesn't uh, uh, protect you. Insurance doesn't protect you. The best doctors don't protect you. What protects you is you doing the research and learning about the stuff and making better decisions. Okay, so which would you choose? Informed decision making leads to better choices and it's fortunately not limited just to cardiovascular disease. We can have the same discussion about so much else that goes on in medicine like diagnostic testing and flu vaccines and psychiatric drugs and musculoskeletal pain, dietary supplements and advice, any and all health related matters. Let's face it, if people saw informed information before choosing which diet to, to, to adopt, nobody would eat a paleo diet. Adkins never would have had best-selling books. And the zone wouldn't have food products in every store because an informed discussion about the benefits and risks of those diets would have led to an inevitable conclusion, which is that a plant-based diet is the best option for, for avoiding disease. 